I hope you didn't expect to see a smile on my face this morning. I got a lot to say. A damn right, I got an attitude. So it's good that Jay, that Jay Williams and mm. Tim Legler are here. You know Jay Williams, Mr. Intellectual. Uh, here we go. Bless us. There with it is. Knowledge. And you know Tim Legler is going to drop the science with a smile on his face. Don't Always. expect me to see me smiling. I want to say this right now. ESPN, Molly, and the First Take crew are not responsible for the words that are going to come out of my mouth today. I own it all. ESPN, brace yourself. Let's go. Man, we know what it is. I, mean, I don't think no speech or anything to do. We expect the you know mountain high greatness out of one another. And the Brooklyn Nets now one loss away from being eliminated. No time to hold your head. No time to think about what everyone else is saying. It's just let's go play basketball. Anything can happen. Hi, Tim. Good day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to First Take. Thank you for hanging with us. Apparently, someone's in a mood today. Mm. As for Tim Legler, Jay Good Williams. Morning. Good morning. Hope everybody had a nice week. Hi. Yeah, Let's go. Weekend. Entertaining. Nice outfit. Say the green. least. <laughs> green. 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 We like the color green, green around here, I just wonder. Oh, just, yes, I just we do. I just St. Patrick's Day? I just wonder. Yeah. Wait, Patrick's that might be the last smile we get. That might be the last smile we get. You know St. Patrick's Day is like in March, right? I was asking and because of the outfit. it's about to be May. I, I was asking for the outfit because of the outfit. That just okay. got thrown off. I didn't know. I didn't know. It's uh, working though, Molly. You got yeah. to work. But it looked nice. Look Don't let him bring Molly is oh, always let working. Me tell, let, me tell, oh, let me tell you something about myself. I don't need other people's approval. Ooh. No. Get it. Here we go. Certainly not mine. All right, what a turn of events, guys. Let's get to it. The preseason favorite to win the title is now on the verge of getting swept. What? Saturday night, Kyrie and KD could not defend home floor, and the Boston Celtics took a 3-0 lead. Ben Simmons will not go for game four in Brooklyn tonight, as we thought. Here's Kyrie after game three on the lack of chemistry. We're all just trying to gel, and, and usually you're gelling around the right time, and that, that team in the other locker room is gelling at the right time. They've been gelling since Christmas. Uh, so for us, we, we're, we're just in a, in a new experience uh, as a group, and, and we just got to respect that and just you know, bring everything we can to this next game and, and just do one possession at a time. You know, I don't want to be too cliche, but I don't have a lot of answers for how you make up time you know, from October until now when you know usually teams would be gelling and things would be feeling good. Um, you know, you could put it on me uh, in, in terms of playing better, controlling the game better, controlling our possessions, being more in a stance, not turning the ball over as much. Um, I have five fouls tonight. Um, so you could put it on me uh, more uh, of just, you know, just doing more, you know, and holding the guys accountable. Same way I'm held accountable. Okay, it's a new experience. I'm trying to gel. A lot happening. Let's just take a moment, and I'm going to start with you. Can't even look at you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is, is Kyrie making an excuse? Look, the first thing we learned at Duke was no excuses. First thing we learned. And I've sat up here on national TV. I defended Kyrie on a multitude of occasions against Stephen A. Smith. Multitude. I can't defend these actions. I can't. First off, he should have started this whole comment off with, put it on me. Put it on me, because I am one of the reasons why that we have not jailed, that we have not formed chemistry by a decision ultimately that I made that I still, as a fan, respect his decision, but there are repercussions for that decision that you have. That's number one. The lack of awareness, though, is what drives me crazy about this one, because for me, frankly, this is something that all your teammates and you guys discuss internally. You don't express this externally to the public nor the media, because you're giving them an extra incentivization to beat you down. We all know that you guys haven't been able to form gel or chemistry. James Harden is one of the reasons that he's no longer there is because of the decision that you decided to make. KD getting hurt is one of the reasons. Everybody knows this. And the thing is, contextually, too, the question wasn't about them gelling or them chemistry. The question was about, so people can have context, Blake Griffin saying that we don't have a spirit. So, Legs, you know this. Sometimes as a player, when you're in a locker room, you know what you're going to say before the question is even asked to you. So he almost went out of his way to talk about chemistry and this jelly. And that's the thing for Kyrie. 
I still think he's one of the most dynamic players the game has ever seen, but this lack of awareness is what allows people to attack him, and I want him to be better than that at yeah, that moment. and I think all three of us are pretty much going to be on the same page with regard to this, and here, here's the problem with what Kyrie said. You don't say it right now. You're in the middle of this series. If anything, you reflect on this after the season, maybe next year, media day. Hey, what will happen last year? Well, you know what? Some things happen and whatnot. One. Two. After game two, he actually talked about a little bit how Kevin Durant was struggling. You're 100% right. You don't even go there. KD's going to be okay, man. I haven't been good enough. I've got to be better, right? He got that in there to that soundbite we just played, but just kind of slipped it in at one point. Here's, to me, the bigger problem, and this actually is something that Adam Silver recently alluded to, and I've been screaming about this for several years. You cannot have an absolute lack of regard for priority of the regular season and think that you can, because you've got names at the top of your roster, roll it out when it's time. And how many times over the last two or three years have we said this, this, this sentence? Well, if they are healthy, talking about whoever, Lakers, Nets, pick your team, if they are healthy, because we're always trying to figure out what that's going to look like because we never get to see it. You cannot go about your business in the regular season the way that they just did and think you can then show up on April 15th against this team, which is this is a 90s-style defense that we're seeing out of Boston Celtics with a superstar that has arrived offensively, and think you're going to be able to do it just because you've got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving on your roster. That is, to me, the biggest issue with what we're watching right now. They thought they could do that. The Lakers thought they could do it last year. They got rolled by the Suns. Well, get 80 back. We'll be okay. Really? No, you're not. You're not coming out of seventh spot with the top of, the, of the, where these conferences look, and the Nets are running into that right now. So I think any way you slice it, it was inappropriate for him to even talk about that right now and certainly did not have enough accountability, I think, on his own plate. Y'all finished? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Y'all got it out? I'll wait. Yeah. Kyrie Irving, I want an ISO. Thank you. <clears throat> Kyrie Irving is one of the most selfish superstars that has ever been that has ever existed in the NBA. He's all about himself. When you and I argued about, vac about Kyrie and the vaccine, one of the things that annoyed me about it is that, see, Jay and I are boys. You know what I'm saying? I love Jay Williams. And you had people actually out there thinking that we were somehow divided because we were disagreeing about Kyrie because they were convoluting the issue. Mm. I wasn't talking about the vaccine. Who doesn't know? Listen, consult with your medical professionals and do what you think is best for your body, et cetera, et cetera. What I said was, when you are the reason a team is assembled in Brooklyn, as opposed to Madison Square Garden or another city, when you are the one that coaxed everybody into following your lead. And everybody shows up and they say, all right, man, we came together. This is about the chip. What I said was, because of what you did, you owe them to take the same risk everybody else took. That's my position. That's always been my position. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is, I ain't trying to fight anybody, man. I'm not trying to get my behind whipped. But if we rolling together in the streets and something throw down, I ain't running. I'm with you. I'm with you. I know, and I know I got to, I know I'm about to go down. But I got to go down. Why? Because I can't leave. That's the brother that left. That's the brother that sat up there and said, y'all on your own. I'm doing me. And didn't give a damn. We look at KD. KD has been awful this series. We've never seen anything like it. Is anybody doubting that a part, of, a part of the problem is exhaustion? KD last year in the last two games of the series, there were 101 minutes between regular regulation and overtime. KD played all 101 minutes. This season, when Kyrie was sitting at home chilling, or he was in Jersey, or he was talking about working out or whatever, who was on the court for them? Who was traveling? Road games, whole game. Who was holding it down? When, when, when James Harden had his hamstring injury and he was trying to come back from it and trying to get himself 100%, who was holding it down? Who was averaging 29 a game? Who was a candidate for league MVP? That was Kevin Durant. And so we're going to sit here today and guess what we got to do? We got to talk about what we're not seeing from Kevin Durant. Recognizing the fact that fatigue may have played a role, he might have an injury for all we know because he ain't going to tell us because he ain't about the excuses. But the whole point is he's in the eye of the storm. Why? Because of that dude. That dude right there who has thought about no one but himself. 
Last year, I'm going to reiterate, say the same old story. There's bubble play that takes place after the season was halted because of the pandemic. What does Kyrie do? As a VP, he tries to dissuade the players from playing and didn't even call the president, Chris Paul at the time. He just went out there on his own willy-nilly publicly. Oh, y'all shouldn't play. Then when they played anyway, that gave him an addition. Not only did he get injured in February, not only was he not available for bubble play starting in July, not only were they not there because they got bounced out of there and they didn't play in October like the Los Angeles Lakers did, they were off until December. So from February to December, 10 months off, Kyrie Irving got. Season started December 22nd. Two weeks later, the riots take place at the United States Capitol. He's traumatized. He can't, he can't play basketball. He can't dribble a basketball. He can't show up and do his job. Look at the cash to check now. It was $30 million that year. It's $35 million this season. It's $36 million, $37 million next season. Oh, he's going to get the check now, okay? But he couldn't play because he was traumatized. I told y'all this before. When, and I'm not, I only bring this up because I ain't playing. When Russia bombed Ukraine, I thought Kyrie Irving wasn't going to show up to work. I literally sat there and went like this. Is this man going to skip work? Because no one does it better than him. 11 seasons in the NBA, Kyrie Irving has played 60-plus games four times. That means seven times he's played 60 games or less. That means three-quarters of his career, he has missed a quarter of every season. But he cashed the check, though. And he leave his brothers hanging. And nobody wants to talk about it. He got the nerve, the audacity, the, the, the unmitigated gall to sit up there and utter out of his mouth. Oh, I got to ride with my boy. I'm here with number seven. No, I ain't going to abandon him. You've been abandoned him. You've been left him hanging. And so now what we're seeing is the rippling effects of his level of selfishness. And I said it on Countdown yesterday. I said, I'm going to say it again. Kyrie Irving is not good. He is spectacular. He is a sensational basketball talent. This brother is worth walking through the turnstiles to watch, just to watch him. That brother, to me, is worth $50 million a year because he's due to get five years, $248 million, blah, blah, blah. He's worth $50 million a year. I would never give that man a long-term contract again in life. Every deal for him would be a one-year deal. Every deal because you can't trust him. You can't trust him to show up to work. If he get the money, he the kind of dude, I don't feel like working. I'm going to take it off. And guess what? He's willing to afford the loss. So if he gets docked some pay, well, guess what? It's no big deal to him. Kyrie the kind of dude that'll get $30 million and go like this. All right, I'll take 20 and skip this time off and leave his brothers hanging. It's who he is. It's who he has been. And the fact of the matter is what's going on with the Brooklyn Nets right now are a direct result of his negligence. And because of it, that's what makes what his sound, that sound that you just heard him articulate to the masses, more reprehensible. It's disgusting to see him talk the way that he's talked and, and act like, oh, you know, it's just a problem we got to figure out. You're the problem. Let me ask figure you, this. you out. Whose team do you think this is? This is KD's team. Is it? Yes. I don't, well, no, 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 I don't know about no, no, that. No, what I mean by that. I, it should be no, on no, paper. No, no, no. To answer your question directly, what I mean by that, when I say that is, the Brooklyn Nets do what, what KD Kevin wants them to do. I know what you're saying. Yes. And you're right. It's Kyrie. But only because KD capitulates to Kyrie. So th when are we going to start talking about that? I think that's a legit well, – I, I hear what you're talking I about. I understand all that. Right. But, like, there needs to come to a point where Kevin Durant says no more. I agree. This and is that mine. now. Yes, that it has now. to be now. That's it, it, that's so a, do you expect to hear that from that, Kevin Durant when this series ends? That's, that's a real conversation about that. No, no. Well, let me tell you something right now. That's a real conversation You don't that. hear it from Kevin Durant. In some, I'm, I'm not talking about literally verbally. Yeah. Like through his actions or whatever. If you don't see that. Kevin Durant ain't going to recover because the, the basketball world is descending upon KD. Do you understand right now that people are talking about what KD is not doing? And they're pointing the finger at him for a lot of things. And the, the indictment against him is the lack of leadership. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt about it. Kevin Durant, I consider to be the best in the world until this series. The best on the planet, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at him right now. He's a good brother. Heart's in the right yes. place. You know what his loyalty is to his boy. That's what this is about. Oh, yes. K K KD ain't betraying you if you his boy. Right. He's not doing that. He's not doing that, right? 
And as a result of that, we find ourselves in a situation where a two-time champion, a two-time NBA Finals MVP, now, what did I tell y'all months ago? You see what everybody talked about today, right? He left Golden State. He left Steph Curry. And that was a narrative. For Kyrie. Did I not tell y'all when, when I got blasted you said it. You months said it. ago? You I said, said yo, I'm not wishing it on him. I'm not saying it. As Mama Mama Durant, who I love dearly, you know that. She goes on Twitter. She went off on me. KD clapped back at me. And I was like, yo, I'm not feeling this way. I'm telling you what's coming. I've been in the media. How many years, Tim, Tim Legler? I've been in 28 years, Jay. I know this business. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you, they're going to say you left the long as the long as go to as long as go to states winning. You left Steph Curry for him. They're not talking about talent. We know how spectacular Kyrie is. They ain't talking about talent. They're talking about character. Yeah. He's not reliable. But KD never could have predicted this with the vaccine. No, and I also think yeah. clearly there was something about the situation of Golden State for KD. But by the time that ended, it wasn't fulfilling for him anymore. Yeah. It wasn't fulfilling. He felt like I came to something and, that was ready made. But he's not, he's, not, he's not indicted for leaving Golden State. He made a choice to join Kyrie. And the reason why I keep bringing up the riots at the U.S. Capitol... That wasn't about the vaccine. He took off then and left KD. It's like, it, it doesn't matter There's to him. There's issues that are important it to him. Well, yeah. This guy's not going to ever elicit sympathy now this from anybody. Can't. Because you, you have to have humility and selflessness yes. to get sympathy in certain situations. And that's gone, man. That and, ship and, sailed. And, and, and I feel bad for Kevin Durant watching him right. play right now. I feel bad for him. Right. He doesn't look like himself. He right. looked, the game right. three, he right. looked like he did his and rookie look, year. And, and here's what Kyrie needs to know. Here's what Kyrie needs to know, y'all. And y'all appreciate where I'm coming from. Kyrie Irving, you could try talking to the media now all you want to. They remember you called them peons. They remember you said they were insignificant. They remember you said they don't mean anything. You can try that song and dance all you want to now that you're taking heat. But you on the record. Because what happened? You have certain people that establish a level of whatever, and they think their status is here and other people are here. Very few people articulated. Kyrie did. He said, he said people are peons. Now, look at you. But guess what? You're going to be all right, you Kyrie, because you're going to go home when this season's over. Got your money. Right, you got your money. You understand? And you're going to chill, because you already showed us that you don't particularly care. You'll go on the court and do your thing, because you're spectacular. But at the end of the day, does losing really hurt this dude? No, because he's already told us basketball's really not that important. There's bigger things in life, y'all. Y'all are, are peons. Y'all don't get it. He said this publicly. No one's forgotten. No one's forgotten except Kevin Durant. And he's the one that's taking the heat for this nonsense that that brother has caused by leaving him hanging. He left him hanging. I, I want to get to Ben Simmons, but really quick, I just want to ask you this yes or no answer. Right now, do you think it would be the right move to give this team another year, keep them intact, let everybody gel, see what they can do? You get Ben Simmons back, you have KD, Kyrie, no vaccine issue, or do you think it's just not working? I, I think you have to give them another year. I don't think you have a choice. I think if you let Kyrie go, well, you can't let, just let Kyrie go, but I yeah. think if you put Kyrie on the trading block, that could implicate KD. And that's what... To me, that's what this whole conversation comes down to. Mm -hmm. What does Kevin Durant want? Mm -hmm. What does KD want? Right. That's what it comes down to. They don't have a choice. They have to see what it looks like once they get Ben Simmons. Yeah. And they have to. Steve Nash hasn't really even been given a chance to coach what he thought either. Right. They have no so, choice but right. to go forward with what they have. Okay. There's two different scenarios here. Number one, let me be very, very clear. Steve Nash has to go. I like the man personally. I think he's a good man. I'm not questioning his basketball knowledge. He's never coached on any level. So the point is, this season has proven one or two things, considering the absence of adjustments, both offensively and defensively, okay, mm -hmm. and the lack of impact he's had on the roster that's been given to him. As much of a mess as it is, it's only one or two things. Either your competence level is not what it needs to be, or they didn't listen to you. You can't have these guys back and Steve Nash still coaching them. That ain't going to cut it. That's number one. If you're going to keep Steve Nash because it's really, really about the roster, then here's what you have to do. You have to go to Kevin Durant, and you have to look him in his face, and you have to say, my brother, we gave you three years. We're giving you your money. 
We gave you three years of giving you everything you've wanted. These brothers, this assemblage that you convinced us to put together has let you down. We need you to let us and trust us do our job, to do our job. Kyrie needs to go. Your boy, he's too much. You, know, you guys know this because you guys both played on, elite, on an elite level in the NBA, in college. Let's understand this here. There are guys who are spectacular talents, but they don't need to be together because together makes the entire locker room cancerous because it's about them and not about the team. Kyrie has the kind of impact on Kevin Durant that paralyzes the team from doing all that it can. You got to get back to basketball. You can't do that with Kyrie in the same locker room as KD because then it's about them. And we're going to see because if you KD and you're not willing to do that, then guess what? You're showing okay. your priority is not winning. Interesting scenarios. Get rid of Nash or potentially Kyrie not being there with KD. I want to get to another player there. Another issue. We were all anticipating seeing Ben Simmons on the floor tonight. Game four Zoolander. right at Barclays. Uh, but that will no longer be the case. Simmons will not play tonight. He's dealing with back soreness. Uh, I'll start with you here, Tim. How should his teammates feel about this? Listen, I think the guys lost all credibility, period, end of story. And you can see it even when you're trying to watch, you know, from a distance. You're trying to watch interactions that he has with his teammates. It's so awkward. It's so awkward because he's not there trying to help them. And they don't know really what this guy's about. I mean, he got there in February. Yeah. He hasn't played at all. And all you kept hearing about was, yeah, possibly he's going to come back this date, this date, this date. He keeps getting pushed back. And then finally it looks like he's right on the precipice. He's going to be available for game four. And everybody thinks that's going to happen. Not that it would matter that much to his teammates by that point, because he might be out there for one game and go home for the summer. That's probably what would happen because they're going to get swept. So he has no credibility anymore. I think they're looking at him like, much like Stephen A. was just talking about Kyrie Irving, they've got two guys now that you question, how much do you love the game. How much do you actually love to compete? And after what happened to Ben Simmons last year against Atlanta, when we all witnessed that, I mean, that was yep. an epic meltdown of a player mm -hmm. that could not handle the pressure of that situation, particularly in that market, the way that he played in that entire series, not just the one dunk he passed up. Go look at the entire series, the way Ben Simmons played. Mm -hmm. He was exposed to everyone for his frailties, for his fragile psyche that he has. So now he shows up in Brooklyn after all the mess they went through with Harden, and now this guy shows up, and you're thinking, okay, you do do some things that can help. You do have value. You're playmaking in your defense. We need those things. And at no point has he come close to stepping on the court. Instead, he lets to sit over there, bring a lot of attention to himself with his, his choice of clothing and sitting up by the coaches. So he's on TV the entire game. He's not sitting on the end of the bench. He's not back in the locker room where he's saying, you know what, I don't want attention on me, man. I can't help you guys. I don't want to take away from you. I don't want people talking about me tomorrow because of what I'm wearing or at the fact that I'm not playing. But he chooses to be where he is on that bench because that's exactly what I think he does want. So everybody in the locker room now, Jay, is questioning mm -hmm. this guy's desire to actually play. How much do you love to play? How much do you love to compete? And I think they're looking at him, you know, fraudulently. And I don't know. He needs to get to an offseason and try to reestablish credibility with new teammates, whether that's Brooklyn mm. or somewhere else, wherever mm. that ends up being. He's got to reestablish himself as a guy that loves to play, and I'm in this with you, and I'm, I'm ready to go to war with you opening day next season. Nobody really cares at this point when Ben Simmons sees the court. So I'm all for players being stylish when they come to games, right? Wear whatever you want. Yeah. You're on the court, you ball out. I'm not talking about what you're wearing to the game. I'm talking about what your stats are on the court. There's something interesting to me when I'm seeing him on a video, carry the Louis Vuitton bag, all the different outfits, the New York Knicks colors he had on the other night, the lime green lamb outfit he had on night. It makes me think pretty that. Fly, pretty these, fly. Pretty fly. But these are signs of people that don't love basketball to me. You love what basketball provides you. Why? Because you like to dress nice? That's not fair. Uh, well, I will break it down for you. Yeah, no, please yeah, do. Because my thing is if you're on the court and you're having mental things, right? And I've talked about this. You don't want the attention on you. You're trying to heal. You're trying to get yourself to a point where you're at the place mentally where you can play. You know what? When you stand up on the sideline, Molly, wearing a suit like this for three stretches in a row, you know what you're saying? You're saying, hey, look at me. It's not about what's happening on the court. You're, you're focusing everybody on your, everybody else on the bench is wearing black, Molly. Everybody, multiple games. 
Everybody's in uniform wearing black. Absolutely. How come you're not wearing black? So there are little things like that that make me think, what is this really about, Ben? Is this more about Ben Simmons, yourself, or is it more about you not wanting to be on the court? I get confused by it. Also, when you're in your IG page and you do the little emoji with the, with the, 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 the cloud of smoke coming out your nose, you typically do that before you're about to play. There's a history of you doing that before you're about to play. When you do an interview and you say, hey, look, it's easy to insert me into the lineup. Okay, you're coming about, you're about to play. When the statement is, I have a sore back, you know how many times I've seen NBA players with things that are sore, Molly, that are sore legs? That's not saying you can't play. So I'm looking at you now as a teammate, and I'm saying, yo, man, everybody's sore. Everybody's played through injury. We're in a dire situation. We're down three games to nothing. I need you to give me five minutes, ten minutes. And I know he's hurt, but give me ten minutes and show me that. Same way Stephen A. talked about Kyrie being selfish. Show me that it's not about you, Ben. Show me that it's about us and what we're trying to collectively do. All right. That's how. That's what making it sees to me, Molly. Well, first of all, <clears throat> that's a very eloquent explanation, and you're one thousand percent right. You stole some of my thunder there because I was damn sure going to get in on those athletes, those outfits. Mr. Zoolander is what I call him. Zoolander. You're the male model, the movie, the male model. That's what the <laughs> hell he want to be. Okay, we see that. All right. But I got so much more to say. Let me say this. Notice I said Kyrie Irving is one of the most selfish superstars we've ever seen and obviously one of the most selfish athletes we've ever seen. I didn't say the word the, the, the as in number one because obviously he ain't got nothing on Ben Simmons. Nobody is worse than Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons might also be the weakest, most pathetic excuse for a professional athlete we have ever seen in not just American history, but the history of sports. I can't think, I can't think of a professional athlete that has come across more pathetic than this man. Friday on Countdown, what did I say? They came out with the news. They said Ben Simmons going to play game four. I said, excuse me, it's 72 hours from now. I'll wait. I'll, I'll, wait. Said, I'll wait. I said, I'll wait. <laughs> it's 72 hours from now. Come to me Monday, because that brother ain't playing. You know why? Because if you're going to play for game four, why wouldn't you play for Saturday's game three? It's 2-0. You see what Boston's doing to your teammates. If you got anything, that's the game you wanted to be in. Not when you down 3-0. There's no way in hell he was going to play tonight. And I'm telling you something right now. As a result, there's certain facts that need to be thrown out there. Daryl Morey won this, won this trade now. Hey, we got. Mm -hmm. I got to stand up and be like, Daryl Morey, my bad, brother. I thought you lost Same this trade. Here. I Same thought here. You, I thought you lost this trade. I'm thinking Ben Simmons with Seth Curry, with, with Andre Drummond, and two first-round pick. You got hoes. Daryl Morey knew something the rest of us didn't. My apologies, Daryl Morey. He won this damn trade because I don't give a damn how James Harden doesn't look like James Harden in Houston. Still can ball, still can give you 20 and 10, all right, but he's not the James Harden in Houston. I don't give a damn. He could average five points, and he's a better product than Ben Simmons. That's how pathetic Ben Simmons is right now. So, Daryl Morey clearly won the trade. Number two, let me say this on national television to Mr. Rich Paul for Clutch Sports. You have to get rid of Ben Simmons. It's bad for business. You can't represent this dude. He don't want to play, but he want his money. Like you said, the outfits that he's wearing, the stuff that he's posting on social media, I promise you, you'll check, you'll see him in L.A. or Calabasas. I promise him, you, I promise you, you're going to see him in South Beach. How much you want to make a bet his back injury, ain't, it ain't going to be bothering him then. I told y'all, we we're still trying to find out. Did he hit a pothole on the New Jersey Turnpike? Was he getting his groove on and tweaked his hip or something? Is that why the hell he got a bad back? Don't you notice this thing about bad backs? Y'all know this as professional athletes. The back is the toughest thing to diagnose. See, with a knee, ankle, Achilles, ACL, whatever, it could be anything. The doctor can say, you're well enough. Where they can't do that is with the back. Anybody that's in sports in any capacity knows that. You can't diagnose what's going on with somebody's back but so much, you're literally at the mercy of the player. His family flying into town, uh, supposedly to watch him play. Everybody's covering for him. He's on the bench, Molly. 
green one day, I tell you. orange the next, got on pink shades, looking like Zoolander and all of this other stuff. I mean, you can't make this up. You can't make this up. I mean, this brother put me, he'll put Fabio to shame. I mean, you got to be kidding me. This is what the hell he has done. And, and got the nerve knowing he hasn't played any NBA minutes this year more than me or you, or Molly for that matter. Got the audacity to be filing a grievance to recoup $20 million. And he's showing up on the practice court, or he's showing up and warming up when he warming, he didn't throw a pass. You know why he did that, guys? Because that means he still gets his money. He's a participant. He's trying. He's a disgrace. Enough's enough for this. And the fact is, is that this dude is robbing money and when, is, is stealing money, rather. And when the NBA has their collective bargaining negotiations and they go to the players and they start talking about pay for play because you ain't going to be able to get this money any longer while you sitting out and refusing to play. And you can try to hold out if you want to. There's only a few of y'all that's making those mega dollars. They can talk about the average salary in the NBA is over $10 million. Well, you got cats making 50, 45 to 50 million, and then you got cats making a few hundred thousand dollars. There's a huge discrepancy there. And you take away the few marquee players, and it ain't like that. You think you can sit out all you want to. The owners are coming. And when they come and they put in a Ben Simmons rule or a Kyrie rule, I want to see how supportive the players are of them. them. You, they screwed the players over, and, they, and they're okay. costing those players. Watch. I just want to Call be clear. the Zoolander rule. That's right. Hold on. I want to be clear on one thing. So neither of you are buying the back either. You just think this is a personal choice. The series is over, and he's choosing not to play? Look, it's, I think it's a subjective uh, thing. Myself, no. I'm 100% in line with Stephen A. The problem is it's very difficult to say that when a guy's claiming he's hurt. I mean, I was an athlete. I, you know, some, some days I might have been feeling something, and people don't believe you if you're not playing well and you're dealing with an injury. It's tough. When a guy says he's hurt, it's tough to flat out definitively say 100%. You are not hurt. It comes down right. to just okay. based on but your observations right. of what no, a guy no, I want to ask Jay, too, though, because I, you, you, I know where you are. I, I, you're not buying no, it. No, but hold on. You are big on receipts. So is Jay. Mm -hmm. I will remind you, Ben Simmons quit on LSU. He didn't really quit on LSU. He, listen, listen. Everybody, he wanted to get his bag and wanted to get his money. No, 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 no. I'm talking pick. about when he missed games during the season. Okay. I'm talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about leaving early. Okay. He wants right. to get his bag. I'm talking about leaving early. I'm talking about the injuries, that, the games he didn't play at LSU. He quit on LSU. That's widely recognized in college basketball. You know this. Most people believe he quit on Philly. And if you, Kevin Durant, the Brooklyn Nets, how the hell are you supposed to feel about him now? Everywhere he goes, he's not reliable. We know what a surreal talent he is. We know how big time of a talent he is, despite the fact that he can't shoot worth a damn. We know that. But you cannot trust people. When you can't trust people to show up to work, you can't So we have two them. people then on the nets that you don't trust to show up to work. I believe that there is some I type of energy injury, fun. but this is where you want somebody to have the mental fortitude to say, you know what? I'm going to give you 10 minutes. I think, I think the kind of applaud that he would get from everybody in the basketball community, right. if you saw him try to fight through it, for what it meant for his team, what shift the conversation around Ben Simmons, but he chose not to. Big difference between hurting and being injured. injured exactly. Everybody, every single player yeah. you're going to watch tonight and watch over the course of the playoffs is hurting in some degree. Right. Yeah. And you're the, trying to play through it. The, the difference is this. There was a time when a guy would say, if I'm an 18 and 8 guy, mm -hmm. but you know what? I can only give you like 12 and 5. I'm going to give you 12 and 5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Problem is now, guys go out and they're like, I am not coming back on the court until I'm 100. 18 and 8 again. That's right. And and that's that's what 100%. that's what we sit there and look at a guy like Ben Simmons and say, man, you don't think yeah. if if he can move length that's, against a Jason Tatum, you could help Tatum. us right now. Yeah. Exactly. Right? There's a book that's out. It's a bestseller. It's called Blood in the Garden. Mm -hmm. All right. In the book. There's a story that's being told about Pat Riley. He was the coach of the New York Knicks. And Charles Smith walked into the team meeting before game when these guys were getting ready to play. And Pat, he walked in with his street clothes on. And Pat Riley said, if everything was on the line, do you think you could give us five minutes if you had to? Charles Smith said, yeah. Pat Riley said, then what the F are you doing here with your street clothes on? It typifies what we're talking about here. Mm. He said, could you give us five mm. minutes? And if you know you could give us five minutes, what are you doing here with your street clothes on? And so what you have is last comment, yep. and then I'll leave it alone. Back in the day, you had dudes 
who were playing, and they were looking to make the bag, make the paper, while in the same breath building the NBA brand. You got guys today that are getting paid high eight, nine-figure salaries, literally. And they're saying, nah, I want to make sure I'm okay so I can get the next bag, the next contract. That's the difference in today's culture. And more so than ever before, when you take into account the pandemic and how it's ravaged folks financially, I have, I have been covering the NBA for 28 years. I have covered, like, four collective bargaining negotiations because I was covering it before I was covering the NBA in 1995. I have never, ever seen the owners more committed to addressing something as, as committed as they are to addressing these brothers' willingness to miss games. What the damage that these few, albeit few, it's not most, it's not all, just a few, but the damage these players have done to the players, the, they going to feel it. The owners are coming, the league is coming, and I, for one, don't blame them one damn bit. It is a travesty. What just a few. Uh, these players have done to damage this sport, and they're going to pay for it. You can book it. All right. Great conversation. Jay will. Molly. I won't wear my rose tinted. Stop. I you wear whatever I you want. I won't bring my Louis back. You're here. You're showing and up. You're fine. You got Celtic green on. No, I know that. Green. You got so you know what? I'm just gonna lay low. Molly, Molly, I'm just, Molly trying to floss a little bit. Listen, she got yeah. She's like, what's the problem I'm, with Ben Simmons flossing? I mean, what's the problem? I'm just messing with you guys. It's just, it's all about fairness, playing a little devil's advocate. And listen, I like to dress. Still to come on first so take. Celtics, Bucks, and Heat are dominating in the postseason. But who's the real beast in the East? Stephen A. and Legs debate that. Speaking of those Celtics, they've been all over the Nets through three games. But can the Nets send the series back to Boston, or is it time to break? Break out the brooms. Plus, we got all the other NBA action and some NFL draft. Don't go anywhere. Mm, mm, mm. It is sad. It's all. It's all. Blew out the Bulls 119-95 to take a 3-1 series lead. Giannis continued to dominate with his 12th career 30-point, 10 rebound, five assists game in the postseason, the third most since the merger. The Heat also took a 3-1 series lead with a 24-point win versus the Hawks. Jimmy Butler recorded his sixth 30-point game in the postseason with the Heat third most in franchise history, behind Wade and LeBron. And looking ahead to tonight, the Celtics going for the sweep against the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn opened the season as favorites to win the NBA. Finals at Caesars and are now on the brink of a first round sweep. Before we get into the debate, Stephen, I understand there's something you wanted to address. Something I wanted to add, sure. and I wanted to add it right here with Tim Legler in attendance with me because he's done such an exceptional job of coaching, uh, covering the NBA for all of these years. I'd be remiss in neglecting to point out that as we talk about these players sitting, we don't point out the instigator of all of this, the number one culprit with these players' willingness to sit out, load management, all of this other stuff. That would happen to be a man that I revere and respect profoundly. His name is Greg Popovich. That is the one person that has to be held accountable when we're lamenting this. I remember one year when the Miami Heat were playing a game in Orlando. They had a, a, a game the next night nationally televised on TNT whatever his friction was with former Commissioner David Stern, Greg Popovich sent Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, and Tony Parker home. How did we know that? They were on a line for Chick-fil-A in the Orlando airport about to board Southwest. Am I lying? No. Nope. True story. Remember it will. They were, on, they, were head, they were waiting to board Southwest to San Antonio, and they were standing in the line for Chick-fil-A and people were like, aren't they supposed to be playing tonight in Miami? And so the point is, is that as we sit here and we lament the state of affairs that exist with these players not prioritizing, showing up to work, and valuing the regular season on a regular basis. I'm not accusing the great Greg Popovich of devaluing it. You're saving the players their legs and all of this other stuff, and I get it. Plus, your relationship with Commissioner Stern is believed to have had something to do with that. But he was very unapologetic in making those decisions to sit players. And it made it easier for the players 
to do that themselves. You can't talk to about the players making some of these decisions and leave Greg Popovich's name out of the mix. That's all I have to say. That's fair. Uh, I'll start with you here, Tim. Uh, getting back to the East, we gave a little recap there. Who's the best team right now? Uh, a couple months ago, I picked the Bucks and Warriors to meet in the finals. I picked the Warriors to win it all. And I started to wonder about that, obviously, when they started having all those injuries. Draymond went down. Sure. Steph got hurt. Of course, yes. you're going to doubt it. But what I'm seeing is what I thought I was going to see, right? That's so right. I'm like, okay, fortunately, that pick is still out there. Yes, so they, yes that's right. It came full circle like a boomerang. The Warriors are back. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's the West. The East, staying with Milwaukee, and here's why. I know, look, I know how impressive Boston has been. I know what their defenses look like. The numbers speak for themselves. I see what they're doing to one of the greatest offensive players this, this, this league has ever seen. In this series, here's why I like Milwaukee. The length that Boston has defensively is bothering Kevin Durant. The physicality that they have that is bothering Kevin Durant. Those things don't affect Giannis. Giannis is different. Giannis is going to be able to do his thing physically. Now, listen, going into last postseason, he still had to answer the bell about certain things. Could you have finesse in your game when we need you to have finesse? Can you make a pull-up 18-footer if you have to? Can you make free throws at an important moment if you have to? Because the physical part, he could overwhelm you. He did it time and time again. But two straight postseasons, Toronto bottled him up. By basically going to five guys in the paint against him, he didn't have an answer for it. Then the Miami series, he, he rolled his ankle, but they were also doing the same thing to him. He did not have an answer for it. So the doubt was there. He answered it. He answered it. He can come through in a way now in a certain aspect of his game if that's what the situation requires. So I have faith in him physically still being able to do what he does. Now, listen, I understand that Chris Middleton. That's where I was going. No, that's but a big Chris factor. Middleton's not 100% not it's playing a big right factor. now. That could turn. I mean, they might come out and say at some point, hey, he's going to be out longer. They could come back and say, hey, he's going to give it a go. He's going to give us something. Still have Drew Holiday. They still have some of the best role definition mm -hmm. of any team in the league. They've got great three-point shooting. Mm -hmm. They got Lopez back now as a rim protector and a guy that can stretch the floor. Connaughton came back. I just – Bobby Portis is playing great for them. Grayson Allen has been a nice addition for them. My faith is in Giannis and the fact that these guys know how to get it done when they when they have to. Okay. Now, Middleton's a big factor. Don't get me wrong. He's yeah. going to have to make an appearance, I believe, in the series. Mm -hmm. But I just think they answered the questions I had about them last season – and I, I'm going to put my faith in them more so than a Celtics defense that could do certain things to certain guys. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they could do it to that guy. This is how much I love you. On this show, you just took up all my time. I only got a minute to respond to you. <laughs> for I'm once. Gonna, I'm going to let that slide. Cause for it's once. Because it's you, Tip like right. my brother from right. another mother. Here's Cold the deal. Karma. Here's the deal. There we go. You see, he's just the Benedict Arnold. Oh, my talking. goodness. But that's all right. Here's I'm the joking. Deal, y'all. This is a very simple answer for me. First of all, Apologies to Cavalier Johnson, the former, the, the present mayor of Milwaukee. Did you see your Ca gift Cavalier. basket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave it. I, I gave it to around the office. I gave it. <laughs> that was I, good. I, 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 mean, I, I, I threw was, that out the nice. bratwurst. I want no damn bratwurst, mm -hmm. all right? But uh, let me say this about no disrespect to Cavalier Johnson, the mayor of Milwaukee. But y'all ain't going to no damn finals. I don't believe it. And maybe it's wishful thinking because I would rather, much rather be in South Beach. And we know this, and that's why I don't mention Miami much because I'm not trying to jinx myself. But Jimmy Butler and the crew know where I want to be. They know where I want to be. Having said all of that, I think Boston's going to take Milwaukee. You got to have Middleton in order to pull, that off, pull out that series, in my estimation. Now, Grayson Allen deserves a lot of credit, and the Bulls should be ashamed of himself after him hurting Alex Caruso early in the season. He giving it to them. Uh, Drew Holiday is big time. Giannis is Giannis, and Bobby Portis, I'm a fan. But I just think that when you look at Boston and the kind of defense that they play collectively, along with the emergence of a Jason Tatum and a Jalen Brown, I think they have enough to beat the Milwaukee Bucks. And that's who I'm thinking about right now. I'm thinking about Boston instead of Milwaukee. It's really, really that simple. And Miami, I ain't mentioning you because I ain't trying to jinx my aspirations. For May. Okay, and stay June. focused. We gotta get a commercial. It break. does. It, 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 we know. Miami's we know why you like South Beach. We it's get it. One game away from elimination, and Same. Ben Simmons had played as many postseason games as I have. So does that mean the Sixers won the trade? We tackle that, and it was another great performance by Steph Curry in Game Four, scoring 33. But is there another Warrior that's even more valuable to his team than Steph Curry? I love Curry. how you just dismissed Miami like. Uh, the best offense.
happens, that never was. The preseason favorite to win the title is now on the verge of getting swept. Saturday night, Kyrie and KD could not defend their home floor. And the Boston Celtics took the 3-0 lead. There was talk of Ben Simmons playing in game four. That idea has been put to bed. Simmons can't go tonight with back soreness. And uh, here's Nash on Simmons. I wasn't really expecting him to play in game four. Nash reiterated that Simmons will play whenever he is ready. He also said that as of now, Simmons isn't getting another MRI on his back. Finally, some sunshine on this set. Monica <laughs> McNutt. Good to see hey, you. Hey, girl. Well. Good to What's see up, you. Yeah. I see the outfit. You, you approve? Yeah. I'm a little seasonally confused here in New York. It might be a little too loud for them here. Distracting. Oh, you can't focus point. on your job. No colors. So, yeah, right? yeah. Really? I heard that really? in the first what? segment. We're professionals. <laughs> Let me just, we are professionals, okay? I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm professionals. I, do, I do just want to point out this point. You guys had a great opening segment. There is a philosophy called endorphin dressing in which you wear colors that make you feel good. And if someone is battling depression, that could be a philosophy. I just want to offer that oh, up. Oh, man. I just want to uh, offer that up. Endorphin dressing. I'm all about endorphins. Any way I can get it. I want to offer that up. Yeah. If you're really, really, I, just, uh, just... I'm not disputing <laughs> it. I'm sure it's possible. All I'm trying to say is that if that yeah. is what you were wearing to make yourself feel good, I didn't know collecting your check required you to feel this... good. This is, this is no. fair. See, I just, that's very interesting, though. I see, like that. Stephen I like her point I just a lot. wanted to slide Stephen had in there. But I would like it much better if he was sitting LA. off into the shadows at the end of the bench and no, not I'll give the focus you that. of the entire game. I'll give that's you that. all I was saying. I'll give you that. Listen, all right. I'm Tell not, me. No, no, listen everybody want to be you want to be sensitive. I ain't being sensitive <laughs> no damn not, Ben Simmons. I am just I'm, I'm just you know? introducing a new concept. Yeah. That's all. I, 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 appreciate I, like I, like I, like, I appreciate your new concept. I'm gonna go with the Shaq concept. And most of the NBA, it's a punk ass move that he's been doing. And let's that, proceed. That, that, that's where I'm with. Okay. I'm and with that. And in the words of Kendrick Perkins, yeah, carry, carry on, on. please. Carry on. It's embarrassing. Oh. Go ahead. Let's move on. <laughs> Okay, you know? let's move on now. Okay. Yeah, hand it back to you. Right, yeah. here we go. Okay. Be, get us be back careful, on track. Don't ever get confused be, who's in charge, yeah. all right? Be careful, Molly. He might see your outfit, outfit and get ideas. He might wear something oh like that. God. Well, he already did it. He, he did it. similar. This is right. He it was did. leather. Pretty similar. It was leather. It was lamb. It was lamb. It was lamb. <laughs> My bad. Okay. My bad. Get it right. Right. Get it right. Get it right. Okay, okay, I'm not, 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 i am not 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 i I mean, y'all, if the Nuggets can force a game five, then you, I have a hard time believing for as distraught and distressed and concerning the Brooklyn Nets have looked that they cannot find it within themselves to force a game five in this one. I mean, you look at the, the games. The last game was a six-point game. It looked far worse. There were bigger leads in the course of the ball game. But I still buy that Kevin Durant is one of the greatest players in the league today and can find the energy to move forward. Now, did they blow... A Bruce Brown game? Absolutely. Um, but I still believe in this team in terms of their constitution, their talent, and the ability to find a way. Now, this is do or die. This is a spot they have not been in literally until this point in this series, and I expect them to rise to the occasion. It's going to be ugly, but I do think they force at least a game five. I hear you. And look, you know, that, that guy is out on the court. Anything's possible. Could right. they get a game? Yeah, yeah but I don't, th I don't think it will happen, and here's why. To, I think to differentiate a team in a situation mm -hmm. like Denver with mm -hmm. Brooklyn – when you watch Denver play, you can see there's, there's a collective spirit there that those guys have, right, and, and built around Jokic and the way that they play. You knew they weren't going to lay down. I have a feeling what's going to happen to this team, because they don't look like they're enjoying themselves at all. What happens is you're going to come out with the right mentality. Your spirit will be in the right place at the start of the game. Let the problem know. is when those blitzes come, when all that bumping comes, when all that stripping and raking on the ball, when you're trying to drive and you're getting mauled going to the rim, when that happens over a period of time and the Celtics go on a 10-0 run, I'm going to say early second quarter to mid-second quarter, they're going to collapse. And it's going to end up – it's going to get to 20. I think it ends tonight. I think Boston really wants it to end tonight. <laughs> they do not want to give this team with yeah. that player in particular <laughs> any life. They want it to end, mm -hmm. and I think they're going to come out and they're going to hit them early, and it's going to be tough. Teams get hit early can come back down 3-0 if – You've got that collective mm -hmm. feeling. They don't have I that. Just the, think the they find it, Tim, Tim is just, so funny to what? me, and so is Monica. You know, see, when you 
are brilliant basketball minds like these two are, right? You tend to want to elocute and articulate in such a way that just puts your brilliance on display. You don't want to simplify things. See, he don't want to simplify it. Okay. Tim knows exactly okay. where I'm going. Tim okay. talking about, you know, Boston want to end tonight. No, Brooklyn want to end it tonight. That's what's <laughs> going on here. They don't want to go to Boston. You think Kyrie Irving want to go to Boston? You I, I actually you, do. You, you really, let me tell y'all something right now. Do you I, paint this? Let me paint this. Come on, come on. Because Make it I, I, yeah. I do know how to paint a picture. Make it plain. <laughs> Could you imagine if they go to Boston? And Boston is running them out of the building. What Kyrie is gonna have to endure to the against with the fans in Boston? Do you have any idea? I'm talking about walking to the locker room, walking from the locker room, getting out of the city. I mean, the ridicule, the vitriol. Don't get me wrong. I got the brother got heart, and he ain't backing down from anybody. But he knows they ain't winning this series. And if they gonna lose, they would rather lose in Brooklyn. It's not about Boston. It's about them. Listen, what we saw from the Denver Nuggets, understand what we saw from the Denver Nuggets. It's called basketball character. I'll give you that. This is a franchise. First of all, they love their coach. They respect their coach. They respect their superstar. And the pieces around him, albeit devoid of Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., so they come up short. They rally around their superstar. You know, the Bone speaking the other day about love Jokic bones. and all, all of these cats. I mean, these they respect and love and revere. It's not that they don't feel that way about KD, but they know that KD has followed Kyrie. And even though you guys, you see the hugs and you see the respect, let me tell you where the respect for Kyrie comes. It comes from his artistic brilliance as a basketball player. It don't come because of his character. Kyrie ain't, Kyrie ain't, he ain't the dude you want to, you want to give him the ball so he could lead the war because he could put on a show against anybody. You want to put him, you want to be in the trenches with him when it comes to actual performance. Like you got, you, you got to get on the basketball court. But when you talk about building a culture, when you talk about having establishing a foundation and building basketball character, the kind that can sustain you month through month through month throughout an entire season, that ain't the dude to lead, and he has proven that. And as a result, Boston's going to roll up in there tonight, and exactly what Tim said is going to happen. See, they're going to stick around. Later, Brooklyn Nets going to throw their punches. And Boston might be down. They might be down five. They might be down ten. But they're going to be there, and they won't go away. And when they don't go away, Brooklyn's going to go, damn. Oh, they won't go away. And then they're going to start thinking, do I really, really want to go to Boston? But they don't want to get swept. They don't want to get swept. Well, there's only one person on that fence right. that really wants it over. And it's even more than Kyrie. Ben. That's right. Ben Simmons. Because ben Simmons. each ben day that this thing drags out, playing. how long ben can he put not this playing. off? How long can but he He was never playing, playing anyway. Ben I don't know ben. why they how even teased that. Yeah. I don't know why they teased that Ben was playing. I never no. bought that. Either I never not. bought that. Listen. Not for a second did I consider here's, he was going to court. Here's my one thing. While I, I love your assessment of the Nuggets in terms of the overall character with which they played all season. Which Brooklyn does not have. But Brooklyn still has, to your, your terminology, a dude that is box office yes. and a dude that is one of the best players in the game. And when it comes to him down to basketball and just I want yeah. to and refuse to allow my team to lead, I think there is one win between the combination of KD and Kyrie in that space. And then let's also acknowledge, Boston has been almost perfect. They've been blistering offensively, right? It, it, and I know that the Brooklyn Nets defense is not. I don't think they've been almost not, perfect. They've been. I don't Boston think they've been almost been really, perfect. Really I've good. seen a lot of flaws in what Boston has done. They're just going against Brooklyn. Listen. They're just going against Brooklyn. Listen, you talent. I I believe that talent can get you one. I could be. I could very well be wrong. You would not be shocked if we you get swept. You are. Swept, but I'm holding on. Are you, you, you holding on? And I'm trying, and I'm trying to say let it go. I'm trying to say I'm let it go. Uh -huh. let the point, it, of, the, the point of the show is to be on the opposite side of you. I'm holding on. This show is right here. Does everybody know? This show right here is on South Street Seaport. You see, that, 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 that's the East River right there. Let them sink their behinds right into the East River. It's who they are. It's who they've been. Why delay it? These brothers do not want to go to Boston and expose them. To, do you have any of that? Listen, I've been there. I would remind you, the late, great Kobe Bryant, God rest his wonderful soul, this brother was reduced to tears. I ain't lying. They got annihilated by 39 points in a closeout game 
in Boston. I was there when Paul Pierce and, 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 and Antoine Walker and them, you remember this, Allen Iverson was there, and I was sitting courtside at the baseline, and these threes just came raining down upon the 76 like a blitz. And I mean, it, I've never seen anything like it. And Boston is not okay. the place you want to Okay, live. but Stephen, it's deal with Boston fans get or get swept. swept. You'll know yeah, in the first six minutes tonight. Okay. You're going to know. Perfect. It's going to come I, down to Kevin Durant starting to operate in a space of comfort. He's had none in three games. Zero. If he doesn't look comfortable, he's got to be injured. By, if he doesn't look comfortable by the two fifty nine time out he, of the first quarter, right. I think he has it's to be injured. It's going to turn listen, into a twenty. Molly, Karen, breaking listen. news, get it on the ticker from my vantage point. He has know, to be injured. I know you're very abusive to me on the air and off the air. You don't like communicating with me, but I want you to text me tonight, Molly, during the game because you're going to watch Brooklyn fold before your very eyes. They don't want to go to Boston. They don't want to go to Boston. And I want you to text. You're going to be like this. And all I want you to say, all I want you to say say yes right again that's all i want you to say because that's what's gonna happen okay, that's right. what's gonna happen body. i would never you too much you too much you too much you too much do you actually, you have do you actually you know how that? much money you would have to pay me to text that that's right that's right a pretty figure that's right. That's right. and i, I don't make you. that much I'm money i'm still to come on first date i need to receive that in case you haven't heard Keep okay. waiting. Keep waiting. There's a new big three in Golden State. They've been pretty lethal, right? Stephen A. Corniest nickname. I saw you Please. trying to force. Nikola Jogic went up 37, and Will Barton hit a three-pointer from the left corner with 8.3 seconds left to make the lead insurmountable for the Warriors as the Nuggets avoided the sweep in Game 4. The Nuggets, no stranger to 3-1 deficits. They are the only team in league history to come to overcome back-to-back 3-1 deficits two years ago in the bubble. That being said, the Warriors looked like a powerhouse. As of right now, Monica Legs still here. Uh, Stephen A., who's the most important player on the dubs? I would tell you right now, it's Clay Thompson. And the reason why is because I love what I'm seeing from Jordan Poole, even though he had a relatively pedestrian performance yesterday, but that was because Steph Curry and Clay Thompson got it going. Game two, or rather game three, it was all three of them. All right, game one and two, it was Poole, and game two, obviously, it was Poole and Steph Curry. Clay Thompson, even though he's been getting his, he really exploded yesterday and he was incredibly effective. And you need him to be that guy because of his experience, what he knows what to do. I love the couple of times, Tim, you'll appreciate this. There were a couple of times where normally Golden State would launch a three and you saw Steve Curley yelling and the next thing you know, they pulled it back and then gave the ball to Clay Thompson on the wing to take advantage of Morris, who's obviously relatively smaller than him. You need to see stuff like that because when you got those three going, all of Clay's the question mark because he's still getting back into his groove. Ended the season with three strong games, averaging about 33, and then the playoffs came. He's shown up as well. But you really, really, he's still not 100%, and we all know that. We expect a better version of Clay come next season. What I love about Clay right now is that we're seeing more of the old Clay from the standpoint he was pressing earlier when he first came back in the season where he was trying to prove he was worthy of being on an all seven, all-time NBA 75 team. He was trying to prove his muscle, and he deserved it because I voted for him to be on that team. He should have been on that team. I think he's one of the top three greatest shooters in the history of basketball. I think he's that lethal. But the thing is, he was pressing a little bit, and he was so out to prove himself and remind people of who he was that he sort of individualized his performance to a degree, uh-huh. and I thought that was taken away from guys, whereas now in the playoffs we're not seeing that. So we're seeing him play, be more like Clay, and we need to see more of that because Poole and Steph Curry will adjust and know how to feed off of that because I consider Poole more of a mirror of Steph Curry to some degree uh-huh. than a Clay Thompson. We need Clay to be Clay because he balances things out. That's why I say him. All right, I'm going Draymond. And I think, again, it is a lot of the intangibles. It's not necessarily the box score, although that assist column on the box score, I think, is a huge indicator of the type of ball game that he's had and that the Warriors have had as a whole. Clay, Steph, to me, Jordan Poole, the offense is going to allow those guys to find their spots. But the offense looks different when you got Draymond operating in DHO and off of of screens. And then, to me, Draymond's um, impact is not just on the offensive end. He is, as we all know, the quarterback of that defense, Battles against mismatches. He said post-game last night that he thought that he could have stepped up and he could have changed the temperature of the defense as a whole um, in allowing the Denver Nuggets to get that victory. So to me, it's Draymond because he has the ability to set all of those guys up. He can hit that long ball in terms of pushing for transition baskets. And he just really, to me, is the guy that kind of sets the temperature 
and allows the rest of those guys to go out and operate with a tremendous amount of confidence. I love both your answers. I could make a great case for both of those guys. And the thing I love about the Warriors more than anything is I always think that the sum of their parts is far greater than any of these individual pieces. Mm -hmm. It goes together, right? So mm -hmm. you can make a case for any of these guys. So I'll, I'll take a different guy. I'm going to go with Steph Curry for this reason. I still think this is the dude that stirs the whole thing because there's never been a player in the history of this league has required more communication, preparation, and therefore communication mistakes without the basketball than Steph Curry does. He creates so many opportunities that you will never see on any type of stat sheet because of what he forces defenses to have to communicate through. Where is he? Heads are on the floor. Is he about to pop off a down scoot over here? Is that a dribble handoff? I got to be up on that. They're coming up the court in transition. I am 20 feet out beyond where I should be, where I've been taught my whole life to run in defensive <laughs> transition. Yeah. So what does that create? It creates driving gaps and seams. It creates space. It makes Draymond Green a better passer mm -hmm. because everybody's extended. It makes everybody better. His ability to play without the ball and what that does to defenses, to me, still is the embodiment of what the Warriors are. And that's why I still say it's Steph Curry. There's just nobody like him. He is unique unto himself. The way he plays, as great as those guys are, mm -hmm. I still think it requires this guy and yeah. being playing at a high level. So he's that elite yeah. level threat that forces defense to overreact, mm -hmm. that makes the game I, easy for everybody I else. I agree with you, but I agree with you because of his personality as opposed to his game. Like, when you see Steph, nobody ignites the crowd the way that he does. Mm. Nobody ignites his teammates the way that he does. You see Clay, you celebrate. You see Jordan Poole, you celebrate. When Steph do something, it just has Crazy. a different feel, a different effect that appears to be more profound. So I don't blame you for that. Maybe I take that for granted. And Draymond, I take for granted, which is why I mentioned Clay Thompson. But I also, I also tell you what it also brings to mind. Do you know that when Ben Simmons first let it be oh, known he wanted to that. get traded? No. You okay. know when he, wanted to, when he first let it be known he wanted to get traded? You know, they were talking about trying to get Draymond Green. And Steph Curry was like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, he didn't use those words from what I was told, but it was a no. I Could you imagine? Thank God the Warriors are the Warriors. <laughs> Could you imagine if Golden State was Steph stupid, Curry enough, makes good stupid enough to do something like that? Here's I mean, just imagine. Just imagine if they were stupid enough to do something like that. Thank God they, they weren't. I, it, here, here's the thing that's interesting about that, Stephen A. And Draymond, you dig into the numbers. He's been on the court for 128 minutes. The Warriors have outscored the Nuggets by 63 points in that time yeah. frame, right? So he obviously makes a difference. But Tim's point is the thing. Because if you put Draymond, even if that trade hypothetically were to go through, Draymond Green has been tremendously successful because of the system that he is in as well. Yeah. And so that's not even, like, that is, can't even really be fathomed in terms of that potential trade concept. No, 100%. It's, 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 it, and and <laughs> I, think, I think all of those well, guys... We all agree. I'm just saying, No, no, no. There's no yeah. question about it. And that's why I think ultimately, and even when you hear Draymond, and you, it's a great point. Listen, it's, it's, you can't even dispute anything about Draymond Green, even their record while, mm -hmm. he, was yeah, out, while he was out. What happened to this team, yeah. it, you know, what he means... On both sides, and I actually said offensively. He's a standalone. Offensively, I actually think they may have missed him even more because he is the IQ of the operation. Yes. He makes sure the ball does not go to guys in places they can't do something with it. Yep. And when you saw him out, Except it was a free-for-all offensively. Mm -hmm. Guys coming right. down yeah. doing all kinds of stuff. Yes. I'm yeah. like, wait, Draymond wouldn't let that happen. That's right. But right. he gets the ball to top right. of D, looks over here and, and goes, and oh, not only that, no, not this time. time. Not only does he here. Not does only know that, only does he know what to do. He can do it. He's an exceptional passer. Absolutely. I mean, he gives Absolutely. these brothers the ball in motion. Yep. Draymond, to me, is a standalone. When I mention stuff like lethal weapons and stuff like yeah. that, I, Draymond is in a category by himself for that franchise because okay. he's that valuable as a vocal leader as well. Straight from Saginaw. All right, up 3-1, game five, <laughs> Wednesday. Saginaw. Yeah, Saginaw. 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 Our first take draft blitz rolls on with Stephen A's favorite team, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. It's been a busy offseason for the Cowboys. I miss talking about the Cowboys. It's been so long. I feel, so like, do I. I feel like I'm back so home right now. They re-signed Michael Gallup and franchise tag Dalton Schultz, who uh, but also traded away Amari Cooper. You just heard me say that the breaking news earlier to the Browns for the fifth round. Can I finish? Dallas departed with impact players like Cedric Wilson, Lyle Collins, and Randy Gregory, but they do have nine picks in the upcoming draft, including the 24th overall. We 
need more cowboys in this conversation. No. So I'm bringing in Swaggo. I know you want to interrupt me because you. I heard well, you. Well, first of all, I want to interrupt you because a couple of things. Number one, <laughs> I, I, Molly, you get me to the point where I wish I was sitting in that chair and you were sitting here. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, let Molly debate and let me host. Okay, well, let, me, let me do that. That's number one. And number you already two. tried that, and you admitted it's harder than it looks. Oh, hell yeah, it is. It's Remember? harder. It's harder. Yeah. It's harder, but I'm just saying, I want, I want to be in a position to bully you a little bit. That's number one. Number two, because I'm very abused by Molly. Molly abuses me. She does. But my sister's going to get a swag. My sister's going to get her. That's number one. And number two, to my... Were you coddled my, as a my, child? My producer extraordinaire. Well, I'm the youngest of six. What do you think? Yeah. But, they uh, probably my, like this extraordinaire Sam. Like I hope you got my cowboy videos ready. Let's get my cowboy videos ready because I ain't seen them in a few weeks. Could make me smile. But anyway, but anyway, we, we can talk yeah, about it. Sorry, they're not available. Really? Yeah. Today. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I remember I have vivid recall. Let's go. Okay, hey, so don't start, like, man. It is it is, it is freaking April. Don't start. I know. I know, but this is, this is kind of fun. We haven't talked about the NFL in a while. So, obviously, the Cowboys made the playoffs last year. They were favorites to go far. They got upset in the first round. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Do you expect them to improve Stephon in 2022? Urkel, we're not starting with you. We're starting with Swaggo, the former Cowboy. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, man. Molly, Molly Q, yes. this team is not better right now. Uh, okay. it, 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 the Dallas Cowboys are not better. We see the departures, but more importantly, we see Randy Gregory leave, who was phenomenal last year before he got injured. Offensive line needs to get fixed. And Dak just came out and said he feels better. It's going to be a normal offseason. That don't have a damn thing to do with the Cowboys being better. They do not have an offensive line right now that's intact. That gives you enough confidence that they're going to be a really good team or even better than they were last year. Amari Cooper's gone. And I know everybody talks about he wasn't worth $20 million. He was worth something. You ain't better without him right now. Cedric Wilson gone. Blake Jarwin gone. But all of this talk every offseason, and see, this is what I get accused of. And excuse my hoarseness. My daughter had a volleyball tournament this weekend, and they won a championship. Yes. And I was heavily involved coaching from the sideline. What's Shout your out name? to Kari Spears. What's your daughter's and her name? Team, Macaria, Macaria Macari, Spears I couldn't hear it so team. loud over there. Yes. Macaria, Macaria Spears. Macaria team Spears, is Metro. congratulations, yeah, 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 Metro, yeah. winning the volleyball championship. Yeah. Was this national? Is this local? Tell me, tell me, give me the details. No, it, was, it, it was in Philly. It's called okay. the Northeast Qualifier. You got to okay. win these tournaments in order to qualify for nationals that will be in Indianapolis at the end of the year. That's the Amazing. one we want, Molly, but you got to okay. win these to get there. Okay. okay? Right, Metro, get getting the job it. done. Let me get back to it. Getting do it, getting it done. Metro got a shout out on first take. This is monumental for them. Okay. Anyway, let me get back to it because I don't want to hear this dude all off season tell me about how good the Cowboys gonna be and Dak is healthy. I told every damn body last year, Stephen A. Smith is setting all of y'all up for you know what's to come. I knew what was coming. And I get accused of it. I get accused of of, of, of of feeling the sauce of the Dallas Cowboys and talking about they're going to win a Super Bowl. I never say that. But he wants to put me on here and put me on front street to say it. And say I'm the damn producer anytime the Cowboys come up. Y'all want to put me on first take to talk about how good they are. They are not better right now than they were last year. And I'm going to leave it at that. I want to hear what this dude got to say and tell America how great the Cowboys are really, going to be. Though? And just well, wait. Well, first of all, a couple of things. Number one, let's go back to your daughter and the league. Mention that league again, please. Okay. Mention that league again, please. It is, it is, it is USA Open Volleyball Circuit 16 USA U, Open high Volleyball level competition. Circuit. USA Open yep. Volleyball Tournament. Mm -hmm. You know why I said, you know why I asked you to say that again? You know why? Because <laughs> Stevie A love the kids. He sure does. Yeah. He sure does. That's why I asked you that. That's why I asked you that. Okay. Yeah, I love the kids. He love the kids. Love the kids. All right. So let's get that out of the way. Now, let me get back to you and these cowboys. I don't want to hear that. You know why I don't want to hear that? Because what we need is we don't need some evaluation about how they're not good and the expectations are lower and so they climb and they climb. And they climb. No, we want the Cowboys up here. You know what? Because when the fall happens, because when the fall happens, all right, that's what happens. Now, hold on. 
York. We, we, we talk about New York. Listen, you, you might not have Mamari Cooper anymore, but you got James Washington, who was a stealer. You still got CeeDee Lamb. You got yep. Michael Gallup. You got Ezekiel Lovett. You got Dak Prescott. You got Tyron Smith. And you got Zach Morton on your offensive line. Here we you go. got enough Here weapons. We go. You got enough weapons, all right? On go. the defensive side of the ball, you still got Michael Parsons, okay? And by the way, Michael Parsons, him and Michael Irvin taking pictures with Errol Spence Jr. wearing the belt. Don't y'all know <laughs> Cowboys shouldn't be allowed to wear them damn We're championship doing big belts? In Dallas. That should not be allowed. Oh, look at her. Wait, wait, wait. Listen. Look at her oh, hands right there. That should not be allowed. Okay, now, let, Irv, now, let me, I hold see on, you. Hold on, Molly. Let me say this. I love me some Micah Parsons, real. All real, all joking aside. This brother is for real. Yeah. Micah Parsons, mad love and respect to him. But it is blasphemy for any present-day cowboy to be wearing any kind of hard, a championship hardware at all. It shouldn't be allowed, okay? And, get, and by the way, do you, but let me tell you this, right? Once again, I can look at it that way, or I can twist it. I can twist it, Marcus Smears, because I can simply say championship belt, championship expectations. And when championship expectations come, the fall actually follows. And when the fall actually follows, we see stuff like this. Can I get my video, please? Molly, can you get my I have video? never. Oh, can I, oh can my I God, leave? bro. Seriously. Can I leave? Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Sam Tanucci, you're dead. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. We're, we're not this. supposed we're, to have this. <laughs> Hey, he lied. By the way, you know that was his. Oh my God! Listen, that, uh, <laughs> did you hear that story? Hold on, go back to did the previous the back story Go back, on that go back. One? <laughs> that look on her face right there. Can we slow it down, please? Let's go one by one by one. Cause I want to tell you what each look means, okay? Uh, I want to tell you that real quick, I Sam. Let's go back to the beginning, all right? Let's go. Out, look at him. He lost his girl. That wasn't his woman right there. But that's a different story. Now. Here's the deal, okay? So we go. Huh? She looking at y'all like y'all ain't worth a damn. Yeah. That's what said. That's what that look means. Exactly. Let's go to the next one. Let me tell you what the next look means. Okay? Oh my God. You can't make this beautiful. It's oh so beautiful. <laughs> look at him. He pray. Oh, it look at the bro. Prayers. He, even the Lord said no. You're not getting your wish this time. <laughs> your prayers won't be answered. Even that's going to happen. The Lord said no. The Lord said no. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, look at him. I mean, this beautiful right here. Look at her. Heartbroken oh and all of this stuff. Look at her right there. I mean, the, she ain't got no man with her. That's why, because he didn't want to deal with those tears. Oh, Let, let's get the next one. Gosh. Let's get the next one. Show me the next one right there. Let me show it. Let me, we got, look, at this, look, at this, look at him. He prayed too. The Lord said no twice. <laughs> I mean, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Look at him. How you going to show up there knowing you ain't with your woman, you with another woman in the world of social media? You know your girl was going to catch you. She did, and that dude got dumped. And she let his, his girl let the world know that wasn't even his girl. I mean, damn. I, that's damn. Now let's get All to right. the, Let's move right, on. Listen, listen, this right listen. here. Cry. Look at that grown man crying right there, Marcus Smith. Those things can't happen if Marcus Spears is saying, don't expect anything from us. So I'm going to say, expect stuff from the Cowboys just so they can be up here and they can come, come crashing down like the sorry, sorry franchise that they are. And I shouldn't say that because the franchise, listen, I, I, I want to say this for the record. I actually respect and, 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 I, and I like the Cowboys. I love me some Jerry Jones. Steven Jones and all of those dudes. It's the fans. I want everybody to understand this. I have nothing against the Cowboys. It's them sorry, nauseating, disgusting Cowboy fans everywhere. They make me sick. I love to hate on them. I love to troll. You make us sick, too. And that's what it is. You good, make us good, sick, good, too. Good, good, good. And guess what, you Marcus? You make us sick, too. Yeah, let, let, let me tell you something, Marcus. You want me to tell you what I want to do this time? It's the one regret. It's the biggest thing about COVID and all of this other stuff. Do you know I actually was going to watch the playoff game right down the block from Jerry World in that in that in where we, we did gonna first take? I was going to watch it then. We're going to watch the it this year. Because, see, this, the, only, the only thing I haven't achieved in my career is watching a Cowboys playoff loss with the Cowboy fans. Now, I came <laughs> close fans. when I was in L.A. and y'all lost to the Rams. <laughs> I was there. I was there. But I'm talking about being in Dallas. I hope, in you know Dallas. I hope you're able to achieve Bring that. Bring Molly I'm, back up. That's what I'm asking. Bring Molly back up. I hope he Molly. can achieve Molly. that, Swaggo. That's right. I can't. That's right. I can't. I tapped out. What we just had, what we just had, Molly, was three and a half minutes of a terrible person. 
Yeah. All right, so for all of y'all out there that love Stephen A. Smith, yeah. what yeah. you just witnessed is a terrible person. Yeah. Because Lamarcus, he Lamarcus, have, Lamarcus, he wait, hold every, up, hold up. Want, this is what he does. He just kills them. He destroys them. But oh, no, no, no. Uh, I actually like the Cowboys. No, like, it's the why fans. Why even yeah. give that little yeah. caveat exactly. qualifier? Because I can't, I can't stand like, the fans. We, the no fans longer make taking me your sick. Account. We, Cowboy we no, fans. Cowboy no longer fans taking your comment. Come, come, come. Hold on, I like the players. We I no love Michael Parsons. Your compliments. Tell me, tell me. We, hold, hold we don't want none of it. Tell me, we don't I can want give none you, of it. I can give you names. I can give you names. I love Michael Parsons. Oh, here we I go. love Trayvon Diggs. I got mad love and respect for CeeDee Lamb. Demarcus Lawrence, he's a little bit sensitive, but I like and him a lot, too. I like him a lot, too. And I love, team. I love Jerry Jones. I truly love Jerry Jones. And Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones and I are going to have a drink one day soon. If the problem is them damn fans, mm. them damn fans, okay? And they deserve and them fans what ain't they did get from me. You. What? What? They ain't did nothing to you. Oh, them my God. fans ain't did nothing to you. Yeah. Marcus. Uh, I, I'm lying. They, if I, they have I, been, he's just they mad. He, he's not down like they are. He's provoked. so fair weather with Marcus, his team. Marcus, do you remember back in the day yeah. the show? Come on. Do you remember back in the day the show the odd couple that was on TV? The odd couple. No. And yeah, you remember when they when they did the, the when they did the promo when they did the promo on that old lady slap. Felix Unger with the pocketbook. Smash. Remember that? <laughs> That's what this old yeah. <laughs> this old black woman that was a cowboy fan did to me at the airport. Slap me with a bag and on the arm. Have. Leave my and cowboys alone. That's what she said and to she me. Should Leave. Have. Yeah. She, what? And that's just the beginning. I hope you see her again. I hope you wow. see her again and she we gotta the same go. thing. He called We're me sick of you. He called me a terrible person. We are sick of you. He called me, he he called me a terrible no person. Yeah. Marcus it's called over. me a terrible Let's person. It. Marcus. And can yeah. I say this to you, Marcus? No. Can, America you just can't. watched it. Tell me. You're America actually done. Just can no. I say this to you? Time's minutes. up. You can't. Can I say this last point no. to you? About, uh, 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 that I'm a horrible person yeah. to the Cowboy fans? Can I say to you? You're absolutely right, and I love it. Oh my God. <laughs> Marcus, congrats to your daughter. Get, get some hot water with lemon and a cough drop so you have your voice for the draft. I will do. Okay, I can't right, deal with that. I'll see y'all in a minute. Can we go to break? Show the video. Can we go to break? Show those pictures. Can you never can laugh like that again? Can, can we go to Don't show that video no more, Sam. Can we go to break? Yeah, uh, we I'm can go to break. Let's show those pictures go to break. Let's show those pictures go to break.